emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Shut up and sit down. Hello gang, Colin here, Festa 67's workshop and welcome to part 8 of the bolt tank build. And yeah, as you can see, the diorama's dried up a little bit, so I'm just going to pop the tank off, put out to one side like so. And what we're going to try and do today is work with a bit of the old mud texture, a bit of the old AK muddy terrain. A nice uh, chisel brush stroke fan brush, and I'm just gonna stipple it on on the riverbed here, like so. So we'll keep that coming across there, and I'm not too worried about uh, what it dries up like, etc., because I'm going to be pouring water texture on this front part uh, up both sides of where the middle soldiers stand in there. So. We're going to have a bit of that going on. And all I'm doing on this is I'm just stippling it in, all the crooks and nannies, just to try to get it evenly spread. Now the temptation I've had in when I've used this before is brush it on almost like a wallpaper paste. But yeah, it don't look the same, so I tend to just stipple it. It takes a bit longer. But me personally, I think it gives just that slightly more realistic effect because the stippling of the stiffer brush bristles puts all the little indents in the top of the soil and that when, and stuff. So it works for me. So I'm going to stick with that. So we can come over to this side and really get some in there like that. Yeah. <sighs> Try and get it right into where the base of the uh, sheer rock face is, basically. And just slap it in there, like that. And then work my way towards the front edge. Come round to that little corner there. Just like that. Coming over the tops there of the folds. And then just a little little bit along that little nook along the middle section there where that rock step is. Just like that. There you go. And there'll probably be some little f faux rocks will go in. And I've got a geezer going in here that's uh, face down that's uh, bobbing in the water. Because he's been unfortunately taken out by the enemy there. So poor bloke and all of that and let's put a little bit of detritus on that there because where the water's been swishing along that bit of rockage there it's gonna have deposited a bit of silt and dirt and dust and detritus so we'll put a bit on there and all because we can because in our little world that's what it uh what it looks like and we're going to do the same around these plimps for these blokes and all because it looks like they're stood on snowboards at the moment, but it's where I resin printed these on a disc base, and then I've just chopped it enough so that the figure itself can be glued to the diorama. And then I cover that little bit up with a bit of mud, a bit of dirt and detritus, and just build it up around it so that all that's exposed is the boots then. And it just gives the figure a little bit of stability on the dio then. Because Festa's clumsy, and also this is going to be getting packed up and, and shipped up the E-model. So, yeah, probably hold on to it and do a road trip with all the builds that I've currently got of theirs sat around the workshop. So, once everything's sorted out and we can all get up there to meet, we'll be uh, doing a road trip so that we can uh, deposit our models off to their new owner. We just stipple this around the back of this geezer so that he looks like he's uh, treading on something other than rock. And I've got all the static grass to put on top of this as well, yet, yeah, folks. So I've got that fun. See how many shocks I can give, give myself with my own made static grass applicator. And that can only go well for us, can't it? 
So let's just give that a dab just to get any excess off of the uniform where I've been a bit clumsy with a brush. A little dabbage there. Just round there like so. Uh, let's have a look. I'll probably do some round by him and all. Uh, excuse my hand being in the way there, peeps. I'll try and uh, change the angle in a sec. I just want to get a little bit of this behind him in that little area there. Like that. There you go. Spun it round there just so that you can see a little bit better what I'm trying to do. Uh, put some of that along there by his boats. And along here, like that. And then the rocks are coming out of the dirt, see? So there's going to be like, well, I say, it's going to be my attempt at overhanging grass and things like that. But we'll give it a go. We'll bring that along the edge there and have some that's probably fell off the edge there and deposited. Like that. And then go around the back of him with a brush like that. Just try and feather it in around his boots. And this stuff, when it dries off, it's like kryptonite. <laughs> it's rock hard. So it'll help prop up the fellas and keep them in their place. And then I can do some dry brushing with different colours and dust and dirt and, and all of that. Once I've got this initial layer in, but I'll probably find when I do uh, this layer, I'll go in with a slightly lighter layer at the top because there's going to be a grass covering. And I'll probably, in the I'm hoping I'll get an opportunity in this episode where I can pour the water and let that dry. And then I can come back and do all the nice detailing and grass tufts and all of that in its own episode. So we'll see how we get on for time. We'll just stip all that around him. A couple of these fellas are looking quite purposeful. They've got their gas masks on and all. Because you never know. There could be, you know, the enemy might have deposited something naughty in the water. You just don't know, do you? So we'll just stip all that. Work our way up along there. So it looks like some of the mud's been trodden up and down the rocks where these blokes have been uh, unceremoniously treading. A few little bits on that ledge there. As Mother Nature has a way of letting things grow wherever it can, so... Not being too fussy with this stage at the moment. And now we can start working our way up onto this top layer. Uh, around this fella with what's got to be the most brilliant Gatling gun combo I've seen. I'd love me to have a go on one of them. So we'll put a bit of dirt around this corner. Like so. Just stippling away. Trying to get different uh, depths and, and, and stuff with it as well. Like that. Just different textures where maybe people have kicked a chunk of dirt over to one way or a divot. Like that. Yeah. I'm liking it that much that I'd like to go for a walk in this little world just to have a trundle. But oh, what's down there then? Oh, that looks like that's a ball tank. I'll have me a look at that. Thought we the gunning down the road in a ball tank. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. Let's worm our way round there like that. A little bit of twistage with the brush there. Like so. Look at that. Have you some of this? 
And then we've got this fella right on the old edge of the rock there, having a look over. As well. So he's got yourself a little vantage point up there where he's probably just keeping an eye on his mates there where so that if anyone has a pop at him, he, he, can, he can shoot back. But these four uh, blokes have just trundled along and happened upon this bull tank that's been abandoned for a while because the crew's dead. Uh, yeah, they're brown bread, so they're like, yeah. So these four have just ambled along through the forest and sort of spotted something. And yeah, let's have a look. They've gone and they've ambled out of this little cut in and found the bolt tank. And they're like, oh, where's the other bloke then? And the fella down there's gone, he's down here, isn't he? He's met his demise, mate. Oh, all right then. I wonder who did that. So we'll keep on going. And uh, yeah, they're probably rifling it to any supplies and stuff like that. And then they'll be on their merry way. Will they commandeer the ball tank and have it as their own? Who knows? <laughs> you know, get it started. They can all cram in there because it holds four or five people. So uh, yeah, they've got themselves a little mode of transport, haven't they? We'll just slap that there. Start stippling that towards him. Just push that up underneath his plates, as you do. All around there. And then just work our way back. Like so. And I'll try and feather it out a little bit towards the edge of the rock, because like I say, it's just going to disappear in it where the ground's fallen away over the years and a bit of rockage has fell off it's yeah it's just exposed a bit of the ground just like that and the beauty of this as well is i'm only after the texture so i can go at this with the old airbrush and do a bit of different coloring and all of that gubbins so I'm just literally after the texture. That's all I want out of this. Because I'm kind of running low on me supplies. And I just thought, well, I've got a bit of muddy texture. I've got a bit of deserty, gravelly sand stuff and all of that. So let's see what we can do. So we'll have a bit more stippage around here. Like that. Get him all sorted out. And it's beginning to take shape in my little world. Let's get the excess off of that. And just bring some along there. And along them rock ripples there. Just to give that impression of something in there. Because I want to try and get the grass to cluster on some of these little outcrops. Just to give it a bit of character. Get that off of his boat because yeah, Fester's gone a bit OTT there. As only Fester can. Like that. It's coming along nicely, I think. Just put some round there, just to raise that level up, because his boat's just a little bit proud of it there. So let's just have some lumps and bumps poking out, so he looks like his foot. His foot stood on a little bit of boulder or something. That's the plan anyway. And then anything else can just go on there. Clean the edge of my brush off. There you go. And we can get a bit just in there. Give that a bit of texture. Look at that. There you go. Uh, right, let's 
do have a lighter shade just in that right hand top corner there so let's have a look see what we've got in the old cupboard of pigments uh, let's just move that out of the way bring that one in there you go now that I know it's a hell of a lot lighter color but again it's because it's finer ground that's all I'm after it's a nice light base color but bear in mind it will dry almost like a brown sandy color a bit like brick dust and uh, yeah and it's got all the grass to go over this year as well peeps so bear that in mind uh, yeah so we can have a bit round there a bit of lighter stuff as the ground gets a bit thinner and it's have a bit more sun scorched should we say probably dabble some of this with the old airbrush might might even go over it with a bit of the old wash just to see whether or not some of the old rain marks will uh, sort it out we'll see we'll see what it dries up like Just work my way now towards there, coming around them edges, just to give it a little bit of contrast, and walk a bit up along there, towards that corner, there you go. All the way around him, just like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, stipple a bit in there, and then work our way across there, just try and start blending it a little bit better. And then just get some more of that across there, so we'll see this bloke over here. There you go. It's getting there. You don't have to be too particular because, yeah, you can blend all of this as and when. Be interesting to see where how the grass settles on top of it all. Probably get more grass on me than I will the diorama, but then, yeah. If you do see Fester with green hands, you know what I've been doing. Let's just put a little bit in there, let it clean off the brush. Bung me lid on so it don't dry out. And we'll pack that away and then we'll come back and have a look at the next bit. And what am I up to? Right, I'm at the wall pouring stage. So I've got some styrene sheet that I've taped around the leading edge of the dial. And I kind of want to pour a little bit of water in these little bits. So I've got some of the water texture and I've coloured it with a bit of printer ink. A couple of bits of cyan, a couple of drops of yellow and I've got this bluey greeny globbly colour. So I'm going to just squeeze some in. Hopefully you can see this. And I'm just going to do little bits at a time just to see how it starts to look and puddle up and all of that lot so that's what I'm going to be doing just to see how we go right. and I'm going to build this up layer after layer after layer Just to see what we end up with. Probably end up all using all of this bottle. So we'll see. We'll see how it looks. Just 
Yeah, it's like that. And it's going to seep into all the little areas around the front and all. So I'm hoping that I end up with a nice square edge. That's what I'm hoping for. If it does, it does. If it don't, it don't. This is, you know, we first go at this, so bear with me. And we've got a little bloke here that's drowned and all, see, so he's going under water. Like that. But I want the first layer to go off, and then I'll come back, do another layer, then another layer, build it up bit by bit, in the hope then that it don't put too much pressure on this styrene. That's what I'm hoping. That's the theory anyway. So we'll do a bit more water pouring, shall we, folks? And I've been letting these little layers dry off for a couple of hours of time. Um, putting in about a three mil layer. And then I'm letting it dry to that sort of tacky, sticky stage. And then I'm going back and I'm just building up another three mil. So that's where we are with it at the moment. And I'm going to be doing this on and off for the rest of the uh, the episode. So you'll see uh, different levels of this getting poured in. But it just lets you see the process, folks, in case, like me, this is your first time. Yeah. It just gives you a little bit uh, of scope as to how you've done it. And this water, uh, or water texture, I just put a bit of printer ink in it, a bit of cyan, and a bit of yellow uh, from the refillable inks that you can get for print cartridge. And it was two or three drops of uh, cyan and yellow, and it just came up with this colour, and I just thought, well, for a start, yeah, it'll do. And then I can always add a bit of dirty puddles on top of it or something like that just to darken it down. But for the moment, I'm, I'm quite happy with the colour, so it'll do for now. Be intriguing to see how it dries up, whether it lightens up or not. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. And then we'll just squeeze a bit more in and work this level up. Come around the rocks there. And then I'll give it a little shaky pops or a nudge. And it'll let the water level out then. And that's all I do. I just tilt it one way, tilt it the other. And it just lets the water work its way along. And it will let itself level out then, as you can see. So it's gradually getting there. And it's just repeat this process every couple of hours. And that's where we are with that. I'm going to let that cure. Uh, what else can we be getting on with? Oh, there's a bubble there. Let's just pop that. There you go. Get rid of that. Don't want a bubble in the middle, do we? No. Yeah, there you go. So we'll put the lid on that so it doesn't dry off and we'll let that cure. And we'll come back at it with the next layer. I think we can do a bit more porridge and see how we do. <clears throat> Tell you what, I will do though. Let's squeeze a bit more in there. Oh, clogged nozzle, that's a good start, Colt. We'll do it the easy way. Have you some of that? Shenanigans on all of that. Go. Look at the heat. Very good, no? 
goodness, watery goodness, watery goodness, and all. Poor little bloke there, drowning away. Spin that along and see how that's looking. Uh, a bit more to go there. Let's see how we look. And there you go. That, folks, I think is enough in there, don't you? Like that. That's a bottle of the old Vallejo gum. But I'm liking the level. So I'm gonna just see whether I can get the dude in place. And we'll be able to wrap this episode up then. Kind of want him about there. Oh, there. Here's what we want. So I think. What we can safely say, we can part this episode up and put the bomb tank of goodness back on his perch and let this set. Somewhere like that and let it cure. So I'm going to pause the episode there, people. And that is how said ball tank is looking at the moment. All right. So next time you see this, hopefully it will be dry and we'll be peeling off the styrene and everything. And then we can do a bit of grass to try us and wrap this one up. So I we'll look forward to seeing you then, folks. In the meantime, pop over to our kind friends over at eModels. Give them a little visit, say hello to all the lads. Bear in mind the world is still on fire a bit, so when you do place an order, just bear in mind it might take a, a couple of days longer for you to get your stuff, but they'll let you know as soon as they um, post it out. So until then, folks, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for keeping me company. And uh, when you finish watching this, pop over and see eModels. You know you want to. Bye-bye for now.